Hello, welcome to Cloud Channel. In this module, we will talk about Snowflake Cloud Data Warehouse. We will cover all the concepts, key concepts and architecture, and how to connect to Snowflake, and what is the Snowflake architecture, and what are the supported cloud platforms. Snowflake is an analytics data warehouse provided as software as a service. Snowflake provides a data warehouse that is faster, easier to use, and far more flexible than traditional data warehouse offering. Snowflake's data warehouse is not built on an existing database or big data software platform such as Hadoop. The Snowflake data warehouse uses a new SQL database engine with a unique architecture design for the cloud. To the user, Snowflake has many similar similarities to other enterprise data warehouse, but also has additional functionality and unique capabilities. So in this module, I will cover the topics, data warehouse as a cloud service, and what is the Snowflake architecture, and what are the, the unique uh, architecture it has, uh, database storage, query processing, and cloud services, and how to connect to Snowflake, and what are the supported cloud platforms. Let's talk about data warehouse as a cloud service. Snowflake's data warehouse is a true software as a service offering. More specifically, there is no hardware for us to select, install, configure, or manage. And there is no software for us to install, configure, or manage. We don't have to worry about the underlining hardware because when we talk about cloud, right, and Azure, we deploy virtual machine that is uh, IaaS service, infrastructure as a service, and we have to worry about the underlining hardware because we get a total control over the um, uh, mission. But here, when it comes to Snowflake, we don't have to worry about the underlining hardware. It is completely the SaaS service. And also we don't have to worry about ongoing maintenance, management and tuning because it is completely handled by Snowflake. Snowflake runs completely on cloud infrastructure. All components of Snowflake service run in a public cloud infrastructure. So we can't run the Snowflake on the, the on-premises or private cloud infrastructure. Snowflake uses virtual compute instances for its compute needs and a storage service for persistent storage of data. So Snowflake cannot be run on private cloud infrastructures. Snowflake is not a packaged software offering that can be installed by a user. Snowflake manages all aspects of software installation and updates. So user cannot run it because it is all handled by Snowflake company. Snowflake, let's talk about Snowflake architecture. Snowflake's architecture is a hybrid of traditional shared disk database architectures and shared nothing database architecture. Similar to shared disk architectures, Snowflake uses a central repository for persistent data that is accessible from all compute nodes in the data warehouse. But similar to shared nothing architecture, Snowflake process queries using MPP compute clusters where each node in the cluster stores a portion of the entire data set locally. This approach offers the data management simplicity of a shared disk architecture, but with the performance and scale out benefits of a shared nothing architecture. Because the differences between MPP and SMP, in MPP, the resources doesn't um, uh, share with other resources. But in SMP, it shares uh, with other resources. That is the main difference. And Snowflake architecture is a hybrid of traditional shared disk database architectures and shared nothing database architectures. Snowflake's unique architecture consists of three key layers. They are database storage, query processing, and cloud services. Let's talk about each unique architecture in detail. Let's talk about database storage. When data is loaded into Snowflake, Snowflake reorganizes that data into internal optimized compressed columnar format. 
Snowflake stores this optimized data in cloud storage. After Snowflake reorganizes data into internal optimized compressed, then the Snowflake stores all this data, all this optimized data in cloud storage, whatever S3 or Azure Blob or Azure Data Lake Gen 2. Snowflake manages all aspects of how this data is stored, the organization, file size, structure, compression, metadata, statistics, and other aspects of data storage are handled by Snowflake. So this is the advantage with the Snowflake. This is completely a SaaS service, software as a service. So we don't have to worry about anything. We just have to use that uh, SaaS service because the Snowflake manages the file size, structure, compression, metadata, statistics, and other aspects of data storage. The data objects stored by Snowflake are not directly visible nor accessible by customers. They are only accessible through SQL query operations run using Snowflake because users can access only data using SQL query, so they can access the data directly. Let's talk about query processing. Query execution is performed in the processing layer. Snowflake processes queries using virtual warehouses each virtual warehouse is an MPP compute cluster composed of multiple compute nodes allocated by Snowflake from a cloud provider. Each virtual warehouse is an independent compute cluster that doesn't share compute resources with other virtual warehouses. As a result, each virtual warehouse has no impact on the performance of other virtual warehouses. We just discussed about shared nothing architecture and also we discussed about shared disk database architecture. Let's talk about cloud services. The cloud services layer is a collection of services that coordinate activities across Snowflake. These services tie together all of the different components of Snowflake in order to process user requests from login to query dispatch. The cloud services layer also runs on compute instances provisioned by Snowflake from the cloud provider. Among the services in this layer, authentication, infrastructure management, metadata management, query passing and optimization, access control. And let's talk about how to connect to Snowflake. So we, we hosted all our data in the Snowflake, then how do we access the data, how we can connect to Snowflake with our ETL tools or with our BI tools. Let's discuss about it. Snowflake supports multiple ways of connecting to the service. A web-based user interface from which all aspects of managing and using Snowflake can be accessed. Next one, command line clients, which can also access all aspects of managing and using Snowflake. Example, we can use this command line client, SnowSQL, to manage and using Snowflake. And also ODBC and JDBC drivers that can be used by other applications to connect to Snowflake. In the previous modules, we, we had a discussion about Amazon Redshift, how to connect like, you know, from the applications to Amazon Redshift. So the ODBC, JDBC drivers uh, used to connect to external client applications in Amazon Redshift. So in the same way in the Snowflake, ODBC and JDBC drivers that can be used by other applications to connect to Snowflake. And native connectors that can be used to develop applications for connecting to Snowflake, uh, example, Python. And the third party connectors, we have different different ETL tools, Informatica, SSIS, and uh, Abinitio, Data Stage, all these ETL tools, and also BI tools, uh, Tableau, Power BI, QuickSight, and other BI tools. So the third party connectors that can be used to connect applications such as ETL tools and BI tools to Snowflake. And let's talk about what are the supported cloud platforms. We discussed about Snowflake is completely software as a service that runs completely on cloud infrastructure. This means that all three layers of Snowflake's architecture, storage, compute, and cloud services are deployed and managed entirely on a selected cloud platform. A Snowflake account can be hosted on any of the cloud platform. They are Amazon Web Services, that is AWS, Microsoft Azure, that is Azure, and Google Cloud Platform. 
On each platform, Snowflake provides one or more regions where the account is provisioned. The cloud platform that we choose for each Snowflake account is completely independent from our other Snowflake accounts. In fact, we can choose to host each Snowflake account on a different platform, although this may have some impact on the data transfer billing when loading data. So, so far in this module, we discussed about Snowflake and what is, uh, is uh, we discussed about this is a SaaS service. And also we discussed about key concepts and architecture. And also we discussed about what are the supported cloud platform and how to connect to Snowflake using command line tools and G ODBC, GDBC drivers. And also we discussed how to connect to Snowflake using ETL tools and BI tools. If you have any questions on this uh, Snowflake, please post in the comment. If you like this video, please subscribe and share the channel. Thank you.